All right, the topic that I'm bringing to us tonight is building your unique sound. All right, you see the my screen? You guys see my screen? Yes, yes, yes. I'm... All right, so the presentation entitled Building Your Unique Sound and thinking about a unique sound, you know, it's something that sets someone apart from the rest. You know, it's something that you hear that is different from other things, right? So, for example, thinking of like big musicians, big keyboardists like Corey Henry, Jacob Collier, Glenn Gibson, Joseph Perra. What kind are the sound that they bring? You know, it's like in any genre, any context that you hear them play or hear a band play and you hear that kind of sound. It's like you can you can instantly recognize that this is the kind of sound, this is the person who's playing. So I believe a unique sound is something that you know sets someone, sets a musician apart from other musicians. And when thinking about being a musician, you really want to be original. You're original in the sense of you know bouncing off of your influences ideas, the persons who have influenced your sound in music and use what you have heard from their music to impact your music and to bring something unique. So if you're a musician, you want to bring a style that is honest to your personality. But we really have to find the first process of you know finding our sound, which is how do we discover our uniqueness? How do we find our sound? So, and then we have to look at the question, is building a unique sound even important? You really don't need a unique sound to make it in music. And you really don't need a unique sound to be a great musician. But what's the sense in having a unique sound? So a unique sound can, a unique sound can, or is the best thing for your brand, can do wonders for your brand. Is something that people can instantly identify you with. So any music that you produce, persons can realize that this is your song, this is your music. All right, and as I said earlier, in terms of Corey Henry playing, I remember, for example, when one time we're head, um, we and the band were heading to Kingston for a recording, and we were listening to this song, You're Going to Live, by J.J. Hairston. And, you know, I was, listening to the keywords and i'm saying this just sounds just like glenn gibson this the way how he's playing everything the runs the cards the movements is just spelling glenn gibson to me and you know at the end when i really got to the little research and look up and see who was playing at that event glenn gibson was the one who was playing there and you know it really caused me to think and that is one thing that really influenced me to come up with this presentation for this evening. You know, as a musician, you want to have a unique sound. You want to bring something that persons will remember you for. You want to bring something that, you know, persons will recognize that this is, this is Joe Daniel, this is TJ, this is Brother Chris, right? And having a unique sound also leads to big opportunities artists musicians and producers can be aware of you your sound through having a unique sound and you'll be more likely to get more contracts you know for songs and arrangements that could benefit from your kind of sound so if an artist or a producer is looking for you know as um like a creative kind of approach to an arrangement you know you will be at the top of the list in terms of persons to look for because you have already established yourself as a musician with a unique sound, a musician with a different mindset or, you know, a very, what I call it now, individual and very personalized you know, sound to your playing. So a few steps to take in discovering and building your unique sound. And there is a four, four step process to you know, developing your sound, building and developing your sound. The first step is listening to music you like. Second, building your sound takes patience. And I would like to add practice as well. 
Um, third one, don't limit your influences. And the fourth one, find time to flow. So listening to music that you like and dislike. And when you really think about it, when you're thinking about having a unique sound, a signature sound, why is it important to listen to music that you dislike? Right? And in order to build that signature sound, you have to have a broad idea of the different genres that are out there. You know, find what you like in this one, take out that and add it to your playing, find what you don't or find what you don't like in this one and you know make note of it. So when you are building your sound, you know exactly how to go about approaching and creating that sound. You know, so you can you can build your brand. And the easiest way, yes, as I said earlier, is to listen to music. You know, unique sound comes from a unique taste, and a unique taste comes from listening to a lot of music. So first and foremost, you should listen to music. First and foremost, you should listen to music. Ask yourself the following questions. Why does this song or arrangement stand out? Or why do I keep listening to this song? So this isn't the case if you like a song, right? Why does this song grab you? Why, do, why does this arrangement grab you? And, you know, try to find those answers. Try to find the things in that song that really stands out to you and make a note of them. And try and, you know, transcribe, practice those things that you hear in those songs and uh, arrangements and apply to your playing. Also, you can listen to things that you dislike. You know, ask yourself why you don't like this kind of arrangement. And what keeps you from not liking this arrangement, All right? So you can have a proper mindset of when you're building your sound, what you can take out and what you can add to your sound. All right? Second step. Building your sound takes much practice and patience. Patience is a must. It is very necessary. Because a signature sound is comprised of many differences. There are multiple genres, so many knowledge and things out there that you know is available to us. And it really takes a lot of time to develop, even years. And you know, to develop that kind of sound. You have to become well versed with the different types of music. Become well versed and you know apply that to your sound and apply, you know, bring your personality into, into, into that sound. So um a signature sound also doesn't come before a technical skill. Right? So a person can have technical skill and yeah, a, a person can have a technical skill. But still okay. don't. But still okay. don't. Yes. Someone, my kids are muted. But yes, a signature sound should not come before a technical skill. It should. It shouldn't be. Second. Yes, a signature sound should not come before a technical skill. Right. So. If we don't have the basis of understanding of how certain movements, certain cards, certain melodies, harmony works, we can't build a sound if we haven't gotten the knowledge of you know, what we need to build that sound. The knowledge is crucial. And so building that sound takes a good deal of time. All right? Don't limit your influences. This is the third step. Expand your horizon of musical taste. Always be risking, experimenting, trying something new. And rather than focusing on being different, start focusing on bouncing off of your influences, ideas, and come up with something new, unique. Also, mimic what you love. Have jam sessions with other musicians and listen to how they approach music, how they go about music. You can talk to them also and get ideas to help build your song. And you know, this is a very important part. Other persons or other people will notice your sound before you even do. So 
I've known a lot of musicians. I hear the play and I recognize their song. And when I <laughs> when, when, when I when I show them, or when I try to uh, like I try to get in their head and, and and ask them if they don't see how they sound, if they're not hearing their song, you know, and it's like they're not hearing it themselves. And I I feel that way as well. You know, when persons telling me that I have a sound, you know, and when looking in myself, looking on the work that I have to be putting in, and sometimes it doesn't look like I am seeing that progress, but there are persons out there seeing that progress that I'm being making and they're hearing that unique sound. You know, so it's a fact that other persons will notice that unique sound that you carry before any other person. So, yeah, with that said, a unique sound is a desirable trait, something that sets you apart from the rest. It gives you an edge when it comes to marketing and it leads to multiple opportunities. However, it also takes a long time to develop. And, you know, be wary of it but don't become obsessed with developing a unique sound and sacrifice unique sound or sacrifice technical skill and knowledge and understanding of music for a signature sound. And in due time, that signature sound will come. So I just wanted to share now, you know, because we're musicians, we love to hear the music side of things. So I'm going to share the approach that I took on a song as the deer. Oh, sorry about that. So that is basically a basic approach, a basic enough approach to as the deer. And now I'll be showing you a more advanced approach, the approach that I took in reharmonizing this song, bringing my personality, bringing my unique sound into this song. That arrangement, that real that arrangement <laughs> took, you know, I really felt, you know, my playing through the arrangement. And you know, I just really want to take a moment just to explain how I went about playing that song and rearranging it in that kind of way. So how I really approach that, or how I how I, I how I approach reharm. You know, I use melody notes as pivot points to different keys. So I like to play songs as if I'm in, for example, the key of C and play in as many keys and uh, as many keys as possible. So I like to have C as the home key 
but journey in different keys. So it's like a road trip, visit the key of C sharp for a bit, visit the key of F sharp, A, F, and land back in C. So those kind of road trips I like to take if you put it in that kind of context. So this is just a last video explaining my thought process behind reharm and an exercise that we can use you know, to help us in coming up with different cards, coming up with different ideas and ways we can reharmonize songs. All right, guys. So in this last video, it's just really a breakdown of the method that I have been using and I found to be very effective you know, in terms of helping me to build my soul and broad my vocabulary in terms of you know, cards, the relationship between cards, the relationship between keys. And you know, this method is basically taking any note, for example, the key of C, establishing that as the melody and playing that same note in the bass and finding as many cards as possible, you know, between this interval. So with C as a melody and C in the bass, the quickest card that can come to mind is the C major card. Right? Assuming that that bass note, the C, is the key that we're playing in. Right? So we have the C major, C minor, can play, you know, those added extensions, the sevens, the nines, with the C at the top. It might sound a bit weird, but, you know, with proper voicings, it can really sound beautiful. Um, also have diminished, C diminished seven, have augmented, C augmented, C dominant, I have many, many other cards that can come out of just C at the melody note and C at the bass. You can also have A flat first inversion working as a card in between this melody note as C and the bass note as C. So just with one key already, we have found almost probably 10 cards already and you know once you have exhausted all the possible cards that you can find in one key it's really a matter of going in the other keys now and finding as many cards as possible they can find make a note of them and see how they can work right so for example i can't find anything else in c and i move on to c sharp C as the melody note and have C sharp as the bass note. Look on the relationship between the two keys. C in the key of C sharp is a major seven. Right? So the first pair that comes to mind is a C sharp major seven. Right? There are other cards that can be used like this augmented kind of sound also have like the C sharp major six the major seven they're really not good with the card names but I don't know have also I have this one was a box um, and, and yeah you know it's just really up to trial and error finding the cards that work best you know for you and the sound that you want to bring across and once you establish that in the key of C, go C, C sharp, go through all the keys, D, E flat, E, and find as many cards as possible. You know, those keys and, you know, make a note of them, practice them, practice the movements involved, right? And it can really help to build the play. All right, guys. So what that video was supposed to explain really is just how to use a melody note and a bass note and see how many cards they can come up with, right? It, with each interval. So with C as a melody and C at the bass, 
how many cards that you know, you know, the, based on the idea and the knowledge that you have of card qualities, right? How are you able to, how, how many cards are you able to come up with? And, you know, going through all the keys, C sharp at the bass with C at the um, melody, how many cards, D, and go on right through all the keys. And that's really the approach that I have taken and I have seen how that has brought me a far away in terms of my sound. And I would encourage anyone, you know, just to, you know, can try out this method of, you know, building different cars and building different sounds. So this here ends my presentation and back over to you, Brother Chris. <laughs> <laughs> Joe Daniel, <laughs> bro, that's high level stuff. All right, great, great, great presentation. All right. Um, I'm seeing TJ's hand is, from, we started um, this live stream, TJ's hand is up. So I, I know he wants to ask you the first question. All right, so persons over YouTube, I'm going to ask you to type your question in the chat. And the person on Zoom now, I'm going to ask you to raise your hand. We will indicate who the person is, and then you can open up your video, and then you can speak to Joe Daniel. All right? Two questions per person. Or if you have one, that's fine. All right? So let's take TJ. First thing we can for this evening is that from the first time really hear this guy play, but the person really introduced me to real musicians still, but I never fully get the concept the first time I explained it. <laughs> so it's kind of a good it's kind of a good thing so that to do it over so we kind of really get a better understanding of when we really explained to me the first time. But um so with the concept we explain, like using melody notes for create cards, basically, it's almost as if you have built your own progression to each song. So, from a perspective where you grew up as a fundamental musician, like you know your standard progressions, everybody knows your standard progressions. You have seven main keys or seven main cards, you know, so you're supposed to use. You have Three minors, one diminished, and three majors. Nobody now go expect if you go all in some flat two, flat three, or something. How you break yourself out of that habit of not being fundamental? All right. Uh, I was joking with that for a good while, you know, because, you know, I really got trapped in that whole sticking to the rules. And sometimes they can't feel free to break the rules. You know, music has, I, I believe music has no limits. And, you know, I think it's a mindset that, you know, has to change in terms of that person seeing that there are many other options rather than just, you know, playing the song this particular way. So I would say, you know, how I came out of that kind of concept, I just really had to, you know, really talk to myself and I saw the potential that I could reach if I, you know, if I, if I am, um, what I say now, I saw the potential that I would reach if I continued in this route. And I just had to get myself out of that mindset, have those practice sessions where I just focus on understanding the different cards, understanding how they work, understanding the relationship between the keys, and, you know, finding a way how to just use one and two out of the card movements, you know, in your playing. So taking time bit by bit, getting those little, you know, those little fancy things into your playing. Really hope that helped. Oh, so, uh, basically, it's almost a bit uh, practicing fluency. Yes. Okay. Like, for example, now, pre-harming a song where you never practice. So, for example, you just kind of go to a normal song. Like, I know it probably become more than me to do. I probably do anybody. Um, how would you approach a song in the middle of the song just 
and add your own PC again. Uh, I would, I would play based on what I hear. You know, if I hear something and I realize that it can work without clashing with harmony, because you know, like in like in a setting, like at a church setting, you know, some persons might be singing in harmony. So yeah, you have to be listening to the melody note as well as the harmony, and you can't play out with that with that melody note, the right melody note, and a different harmony. You're gonna have some clashes there. So what I would do. You know, I would, you know, based on what I hear, I play play what I hear. If I hear if I hear something that can work, I just flow with it. But I think most of this really comes when you have that individual practice time, when you really focus on that, because it can be tricky executing those things in church. Because in the moment you can feel, you can feel the or you can feel the inspiration to do it. But if you haven't practiced it, it can really, really throw off some persons. Uh, what is good? Yes, hey, bro. Yeah, bless up, TJ. Bless up, Chris. All right. All right. Um, Joe Daniel, let's look into the type of instruments that you play. What is your, your favorite? uh type of keyboard and tell us why it's your favorite um my favorite keyboard i love the motif yamaha motif i just love the feel i love the feel that it gives you know in terms of the rebound of the keys it just really feels nice to me and i love the sounds i love the you know the different things that they can use that keyboard to do you know and I, I see that as my favorite keyboard. But my oh. <laughs> but my my top 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 keyboard is Nard Stage 3. Okay. Why is that keyboard um is at the top for you? Sounds the, the sounds are just rich, rich, rich and mm. I haven't felt one before, but just by hearing other persons play and the experience that they're having with it is like, it really, really, really makes me want to jump on one of those as well. I know it's costly, okay. but it would be a great, great investment. Mm -hmm. All right, um, I, I know you have thought of a lot of popular artists, right? And Somebody once said that keyboard collabs are, are not really uh, an ideal thing. But who is the person that stands out in your mind that you would actually dream of performing for on one of these main stage? Which one of these artists? Thai Tribute. <laughs> Thai Tribute. Second time in a row, you know, we had Tai Chi bit last week. <laughs> <laughs> tai Chi bit. All right. Why though? Why? His, 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 his thought process behind, he takes mm. everything, everything. He takes everything, the lyrics, everything and puts it into the song and makes it work. And that is really look like an open mind. You know, to the music. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Um, Ty gives you the, the, the freedom to, to use your reharmonization ideas. Yes, I sir. Yes, sir. All right. All right. I'm Joe Daniel, we actually have a question from God's son, the chosen one. Welcome, sir. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Sir Wilson, how far for your compositions? Because I have heard a lot of your compositions. Um, where do you get your your ideas and inspiration from? All right, so my ideas are really comes from listening to a, a whole lot of music. A whole lot of music, 
I've been listening to a whole lot of Jacob Collier's music for a while. Um, he has been out. He has been a good guy since I've listened. So, but uh, I've just been basically working off of what I hear. Right. So in my practice sessions, I might, you know, be practicing a song and then I just decide to just go full full reharm on this song, and you know, just see and see how far I can push myself in terms of what I can do without going to 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 out the box, you know. So that's my approach, and that's and that is and Jacob Kala is the main inspiration behind most of my music. Awesome. All right, Sir Godson. All right, we have a question here from Miguel Thompson. He says, you do a lot of vocal arrangements and composition of your own. What is your creative process like? What is my creative process like approaching vocal arrangements? So first, I would listen to the original progression of the song. I use that original progression as the basis of where, you know, I'll start my arrangements. And there are some cases where I will just, just not, 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 not think about the progression, the original progression, the fundamental um, progression, and just or whatever comes to mind. But in most cases, I listen to the original progression. I listen for parts, you know, that sounds like a nice pivot point to go to an next key. Or to make a next, you know, interesting move, and yeah, that's really my creative process. And I just really play based off of what I hear. If I hear like this card wants to go somewhere, I try to find that sound. I try to find that, that 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 harmony that will match up with what I'm hearing, you know, in terms of the song that I'm playing and reharm. Okay. All right. We have, um, I'm seeing TJ's hand and I'm seeing um, God's son, chosen one. Uh, but let's stay at Delano before we take those other guys that went already. Delano Patterson. Delano. Yes, we're not here in the Delano. Okay. All right, so you hear me now? Yeah, man. All right. So um, what da or what does do you use? Um, or what do you what does do you recommend um us as musicians to use? Uh, I have been I uh, really started using you know does and is Ableton have really found to work best for me right now. I also have yeah. contact, can also try contact as well. Yeah. So, so Ableton All is right. the one that I really have been using a whole lot. All right. Thanks, very respect, man. Yeah, man. No problem. All right. Yeah. Bless up, Delano. Um, let's go back to TJ. And then we take Godson. All right. Um, notice like one of your arrangements or compositions or whatever the hell we can call that. <laughs> um, you did a, can I call it a microtonal composition of Great Is Thy Faithfulness once that does not contain chords, I might add. How on earth did you come up with that? Uh, <laughs> it was just, it was just, I think it was just the vibe, the inspiration. I just felt to do something totally, totally different, you know. First, by playing, by reharmonizing the song first and then doing it in a key that 
you know, it's not in the normal or in the Western tuning. You know, so I just really got an inspiration just to try something, just to push my musicality, you know, push my creative, you know, aspect to me and my sound. And I just decided to go full hard and great is thy faithfulness in a microtonal key. Insane, bro. Well done. Respect. I appreciate it, man. Um, Godson, you ready? Yes, sir, I am. All right, everyone near me? Yeah, man. Yeah, man, go ahead. All right. So, so, there, so there is a myth, I can call it, um, that you have to be born with perfect pitch. Um, I know that you are that you are, that you have pitch accuracy. Um, were you born with perfect pitch, or did you develop perfect pitch? And if you develop perfect pitch, how did you do it? Uh, I don't. I personally don't think I have perfect pitch. I think I have a high relative pitch. I think I have a high relative pitch. Um, I've tried working on a perfect pitch and what do I say? How I start, how I did it, I just like listen to, you know, keys, just listen to like different individual keys um, for quite a while until I get used to them, hearing them and, you know, just having them around me just listening to like, probably go to bed with like uh you know those kind of um perfect pitch training videos yeah so i used that to help me and that has really helped me a lot in terms of where or how i can find a key quickly or can hear a certain card and identify exactly or close to accurately how um what card that is Thank you very much, sir. Yeah, man. All right. Awesome. Um, we have a question from YouTube from, um, what is this, C. Drew Bickford. I hope I pronounce that accurately. Um, how do you, yeah, how do you approach practicing in every key? All right, all the approach practicing in every key. All right, so I take one thing, one thing, not a whole song, one like one movement, and go through all the keys. You know, practicing it, you know, chromatically up, whereas I don't, whereas are doing it in a perfect fifth kind of style, perfect, yeah, perfect fifth kind of style. So, for example, I practice this movement in the key of C, then I move on to the key of F and do the same movement, B flat, E flat, and, and, it, and the list goes on. So that is really how I go about practicing, you know, in every key, taking a little piece, not a whole sound, because you can't really get stressing, even if you're trying to, uh, especially for somebody who's breaking out of a transpose, uh, breaking out of a transpose thing. Yeah, you can really be hard learning a whole sound you know, a whole verse in all 12 keys, unless you really have that mindset and that determination. If you sit down for hours to work out every, you know, every movement in each key. So I just take bits and pieces of different, you know, movements, chord progressions, and just take my time, work throughout all the keys then, until, you know, I reach a level of confidence in them. All right, um, let's take this one from Pocket King Music. As a MD, how do you manage to push, dominate, and keep the feel of the music while blending together with a live band? I can repeat the question again. As a MD, how do you manage to push, dominate, and keep the feel of the music 
while blending together with a live band? Uh, thanks, Pakit King. Bring it. Uh, as an MD, first, what I do, you know, get the full card structure, um, outline the full card structure to everyone so everyone is on the same page. So the base, the base, he knows which base note to land on when we play this kind of card. So that, you know, when in the moment and, you know, we're playing those kind of, you know, mash mids, call it that kind of way, um, it can really bring that vibe and because everyone will be on the same page. So that's really my way how I keep the blend of the band, you know, outlining the card structure from before, getting the guys used to the kind of approach that, you know, I would take, you know, and giving them an idea of what, you know, my my idea is towards this and then going on the live set or the live performance and executing and just enjoying ourselves and just being free to um whatever comes to mind you know to work off of that and you know create a great vibe awesome um delano your, your hand is still up do you have another question oh no 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 uh mistake all right sir bless up all right, uh, Joe Daniel, we are almost wrapping up things, um, but I feel there's someone else who has um, at least two more questions we'd like to ask. Um, do you have family in the the Zoom chat here? Uh, let me check. Joe Daniel. Let me check. Um... Yes, sir. All right. Yes, sir. You can give a, a shout out. We normally give shout outs to family members who are here to, to support the presenters. All right. All right. Um, so, Desmond Wilson. Yes, sir. Who is Desmond? My father, sir. Oh, Desmond is the father. Uh, Mr. Yes, Wilson, would you like to say something? <laughs> You're putting me on, on the spot right now. Hello. Sir Desmond. Yes, sir. Welcome. Welcome to the Music Hacks Network. You can open up your camera and speak. Not likely. All I, right. leave, I leave the spotlight on, on, on Joe Daniel, my son. All right. Take a minute and, and, and say something. Well, I was just looking at this sample from my gene pool from a whole new level. Because um, mm -hmm. I've seen him and heard him. I sometimes I'm a, a late worker and I see and I hear him in the room, and I see that he he sleeps, lives, breathes music, and so it's quite clear to me that it's a part of his DNA. Um. He is very committed to this craft and is obviously beginning to show. I know he didn't get it from me, but um, I do have an appreciation for good music and I realize that he has taken music to a whole new level. I hear people referring to him as alien. I, know, I, can, I, yes. can only, I can only assume that, that those are his acquaintances who have seen him. Yeah, Mr. Keys, uh, Mr. J. Keys, yeah, I realize you're calling him an alien a lot. But, um, <laughs> yeah, he's dedicated, that's what I can say. All right. Yes, yes, sir. This one, and, and thanks for giving him the latitude to to practice. Well, from a, right. a very early age, I realized that he had a gift in this area. Um, he was mm -hmm. very tuned into to music. He was very focused, and as a result, I. 
I encourage him to, to take advantage of this ability. And I think he's gone further than I thought he would. But he's, he's clearly gifted. Okay, sir. All right. Thank you, sir, Desmond. All right. Um, before we finish this live stream, um, John Dallet, I would like to thank you very much for taking time out of your busy schedule. You should be at home um, doing your schoolwork, but you took time out of that to do this awesome presentation, and we are truly grateful. Um, I'm going to ask you to add if there's anything that you would like to add before we go and also give your your social media contacts where we can find you to get some of these great information that you you have presented tonight. All right. So I just would like to leave with all the musicians, the music community. I just really want to you know, just encourage every musician to keep practicing. You know, there will be times where there is no motivation and there is no push, there is no drive. Many times you might hear so many great musicians out there killing it every time they play, bringing something new to the table every time they play. And it really causes you to think that, you know, one man, you know, really not make any progress because these guys just basically have blossom overnight, you know, but it takes time, it takes patience, it takes much practice and sacrifice. And, you know, with God, everything is possible. So I just want to leave that with all the guys, you know, just keep putting in the work, keep practicing. Um, you can find me on Instagram, Joe Daniel Wilson, and on Facebook, same name, Joe Daniel Wilson, J O hyphen D A N I E L Wilson. Awesome, awesome, Joe Daniel. Thank you, sir. And we'll definitely see you at another time. Yes, sir. Definitely. All right. I definitely want to thank you guys for joining us today on the Music Hacks Network. It was a great show. Before we go, I'm asking you please to hit that subscribe icon. Hit that subscribe icon, like the video, share the video, and comment on the video.